For the last 45 plus years, the Voyager 2 spacecraft has been hurling through space further from Earth. At around 12.3 billion miles or 20 billion kilometers away, the spacecraft is in uncharted territory and an important asset to NASA and the space community. This is why many were concerned when communication with the probe was lost late last month in July. This communication interruption had to do with a series of instructions sent by the agency that ended up altering the antenna placement. Thankfully, just days ago, the agency was able to receive science and telemetry data from the spacecraft. By now, Voyager 2 has completed its main objectives and has managed to survive much longer than originally thought. As it flies through interstellar space, who knows what discoveries it could make. Here I'll go more in depth into the communication dropout, how NASA was able to re-establish communication, the journey of this probe, and more. NASA said in a statement that a series of planned commands sent to NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft on July 21st inadvertently caused the antenna to point two degrees away from Earth. As a result, Voyager 2 is currently unable to receive commands or transmit data back to Earth. This obviously was not good news, and had some within the agency worried about the state and future of the spacecraft. Thankfully, a few days ago on the 1st, using multiple antennas, NASA's Deep Space Network, or DSN, was able to detect a carrier signal from Voyager 2. A carrier signal is what the spacecraft uses to send data back to Earth. The signal was too faint for data to be extracted, but the detection confirmed that the spacecraft was still operating. At the time, the spacecraft also continued on its expected trajectory. NASA said that, although the mission expects the spacecraft to point its antenna at Earth in mid-October, the team will attempt to command Voyager sooner, while its antenna is still pointed away from Earth. To do this, a DSN antenna will be used to shout the command to Voyager to turn its antenna. This intermediary attempt may not work, in which case the team will wait for the spacecraft to automatically reset its orientation in October, they said. This leads us to yesterday the 4th, when the agency's Deep Space Network facility in Australia sent the equivalent of an interstellar shout more than 12.3 billion miles or 20 billion kilometers to Voyager 2, instructing the spacecraft to reorient itself and turn its antenna back to Earth. To put in perspective the distance between Voyager 2 and Earth, with a one-way light time of 18.5 hours for the command to reach Voyager, it took 37 hours for mission controllers to learn whether the command worked. At 12.29 a.m. EDT on August 4th, the spacecraft began returning science and telemetry data, indicating it's operating normally and that it remains on its expected trajectory. As far as the reset, this will still happen on October 15th. In the case that communication is lost again between now and then, or an issue arises, this should reorient the spacecraft and ensure it's pointing toward Earth. Right after this small scare, NASA had said that the mission team expects Voyager 2 to remain on its planned trajectory during the quiet period. In other words, they were confident that even though they weren't able to make contact with the spacecraft, that it would continue on without issue until the October timeline. In reality, the fact that Voyager 2 is still operating and the agency is still talking to it is a feat in itself. The primary mission goal was to fly by a few planets within our solar system and the ice giants in particular. Back in the early 70s, it was realized that a periodic alignment of the outer planets would occur in the late 1970s and enable a single probe to visit Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and a few others by taking advantage of the then new technique of gravity assists. Voyager 2 included 16 hydrazine thrusters, three axis stabilization gyroscopes, and celestial referencing instruments to maintain pointing of the high gain antenna toward Earth. Collectively, these instruments are part of the Attitude and Articulation Control Subsystem, or AACS, along with redundant units of most instruments and eight backup thrusters. The spacecraft also included 11 scientific instruments to study celestial objects as it traveled through space. In order to keep the spacecraft alive, NASA has altered some of its power sources and needs. A few years ago, in 2018, the spacecraft made history, when for the second time ever, a human-made object reached the space between the stars. NASA's Voyager 2 probe had exited the heliosphere, the protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields created by the sun. At the time, comparing data from different instruments aboard the spacecraft, mission scientists determined the probe crossed the outer edge of the heliosphere on November 5th. This boundary, called the heliopause, is where the hot solar wind meets the cold, dense interstellar medium. Its twin, Voyager 1, crossed this boundary in 2012, but Voyager 2 carries a working instrument that provides first-of-its-kind observations of the nature of this gateway into interstellar space. The most compelling evidence of Voyager 2's exit from the heliosphere came from its onboard Plasma Science Experiment, or PLS, an instrument that stopped working on Voyager 1 in 1980, long before the probe crossed the heliopause. Until this milestone, the space surrounding Voyager 2 was filled predominantly with plasma flowing out from our sun. This outflow, called the solar wind, creates a bubble, the heliosphere, that envelops the planets in our solar system. The PLS aboard Voyager 2 observed a steep decline in the speed of solar wind particles on November 5th. Since that date, the plasma instrument has observed no solar wind flow in the environment around Voyager 2, 
which made mission scientists confident the probe had left the heliosphere. While impressive, these spacecraft, and Voyager 2 in particular, is not meant to last forever. The missions are slowly losing power from their nuclear radioisotope generators, but engineers have made several alterations to preserve their systems where possible. The heaters have been shut off, for example, and earlier this year, engineers disabled Voyager 2's surge protector or voltage regulator, all in an effort to keep the probe alive as long as possible. There still is a lot to learn about the region of interstellar space immediately beyond the heliopause, said Ed Stone, Voyager project scientist based at Caltech in California. Together, the two Voyagers provide a detailed glimpse of how our heliosphere interacts with the constant interstellar wind flowing from beyond. Their observations complement data from NASA's Interstellar Boundary Explorer, a mission that is remotely sensing that boundary. Voyager has a very special place for us in our heliophysics fleet, said Nicola Fox, director of the Heliophysics Division at NASA headquarters. Our studies start at the sun and extend out to everything the solar wind touches. To have the Voyagers sending back information about the edge of the sun's influence gives us an unprecedented glimpse of truly uncharted territory. While the probes have left the heliosphere, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have not left the solar system and won't be leaving anytime soon. The boundary of the solar system is considered to be beyond the outer edge of the Oort cloud, a collection of small objects that are still under the influence of the sun's gravity. The width of the Oort cloud is not known precisely, but it's estimated to begin at 1,000 astronomical units, or AU, from the sun and extend to about 100,000 astronomical units. One AU is the distance from the sun to the Earth. It will take about 300 years for Voyager 2 to reach the inner edge of the Oort cloud and possibly 30,000 years to fly beyond it. The Voyager probes are powered using heat from the decay of radioactive material, contained in a device called a radioisotope thermal generator, or RTG. The power output of the RTGs diminish by about 4 watts per year, which means that various parts of the Voyagers, including the cameras on both spacecraft, have been turned off over time to manage power. By now, both spacecraft have traveled well beyond their original destinations. The spacecraft were built to last five years and conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn. As the spacecraft flew across the solar system, remote control reprogramming was used to endow the Voyagers with greater capabilities than they possessed when they left Earth. Their two-planet mission became a four-planet mission. Their five-year lifespans have stretched to 46 years, making Voyager 2 NASA's longest-running mission, an exciting fact that the agency hopes to keep going in the coming years and beyond. Just yesterday, NASA was able to re-establish communication with Voyager 2 after command shifted the spacecraft's antenna away from Earth. After around 37 hours of travel time, the message was sent to and received from the spacecraft. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.